Now, talking about the implementation of arrays, uh, in Python, we don't actually have uh, something separate for an array. It's a common data structure is used called as list. Now, a list is, as you can assume, it's just a list and it's represented by two square brackets. Okay, so when we have to define a particular list, we can just say uh, array one equals to zero comma one comma two comma three and so on. So this particular thing is actually saved as an array, which we discussed a couple videos back, is saved in terms like this. Now, in case of Python, list can take uh, multiple types of data together. So you have the restrictions and the benefits of using a list as an array, but that is how it's constructed. Now, if you remember, this particular thing uh, has something called as an indexing. Now, indexing is basically the, if you remember, you use it in your notebooks, like, okay, this is index one, two, three, four, and so on. So this is the third item, this is the eighth item, and so on. Now, in case of computer science and arrays in usual, in any language, the indexing actually starts with a zero and then a one, then two, three, and so on. So the first item, if you want to consider this particular item, you need to say that, okay, I want the index zero item of this array. For example, if I want the uh, item two, so this is zero, one, two, this is the index two item here. So I would just say array one, and inside that, using square bracket, if I say two, now this particular thing means, okay, in the array, I want the index two. So in this particular array, I want the index two. So this will give me a value of two. Similarly, I can have an array of uh, characters. So it's A, B, C, D. If I run the same thing for this, I would get zero, one, two, a C value, right? So this is what uh, the basic functions of array is. Now, if I want to change uh, this value from B to, let's say, Z, I can do it uh, in the same way. Let's say this array is called as S. So I would say that S of 1, that is this particular location, is now Z. So after this particular interaction, I would have it as A, Z, and C. So you can uh, change the values. You can just add values. Uh, we have an option to delete values as well. But more commonly, the thing that you would actually use here is something that you will uh, you heard in the special video in the features of array that is looping. Now we know that we haven't discussed looping uh, in detail, but uh, this is a good uh, point to uh, get into looping right now. So the thing is that when you have multiple items, and in most of the cases, let's say you want to search through a thousand results, you will not actually type S1, S2, S3, S4 to thousand. So what you do is that you tell the computer, okay, for a variable, let's say I, uh, in the range of zero to 100, uh, print A of I, okay? So uh, since it's Python, it's actually relatively easy to understand what is written here. So I said for I, for this particular variable, in the range, in the range of value zeros to 100, print all of A of I. So what happens here is that I will actually take the value of zero, then we'll take the value of one, we'll take the value of two, we'll take the value of three, and it will run this particular code that is printing this A of I with all these values. So automatically you will get A of zero, uh, A of one, A of two, and so on. Now, other than this particular range, since list is an item on which we commonly iterate, uh, Python has another feature for that as well. Here you said for item in, let's say this is array one, so array one, and the same colon which you used for functions, print item. Now, if you see this, this particular item is not having the values of the index anymore it is actually taking the value of the items inside an array. So item will first have the value of zero and then it will enter this particular block of codes. There can be more lines here with items value be zero and it will do all the codes. After that, it will take the value of one and it will run through all these codes. And then it will go ahead and have the value of two and then go ahead and run all these codes. So basically item takes these values one by one and do whatever is instructed in this particular set of codes. Now, this particular thing is actually called as a for loop. 
and in almost any case in python we usually use for loops only now we'll just see whatever we have discussed here in terms of direct quotes okay uh, so let's uh, do this as first let's say our first uh, array is arr arr1 and that is equals to let's say a uh, b and uh, c and to separate all these values you have this uh, comma just like for the separate values in print or in case of functions as well whenever we need by default most of the places the separator is actually a comma okay so i have an array of a b c d and i run this thing now just to be sure let's check the type of uh, the variable a1 so this is a list as i said this list is determined by having these square brackets okay now we just need the b item so this one is index 0 this is index 1 so if i have to print just the b1 i would take print uh, array 1 and i want the index item at 1 now it has given us b if you count it as 1 and 2 you would assume that a should come but remember indexing starts with 0 okay now let's say i have to change this particular uh, array so right now the array is this uh, what i did is that i would take the index 2 which will give me the value of c and i made it as capital c okay and i run this thing now array 1 it's capital c now okay now so this is how you can change the values in this particular array now uh, other than that in a simple list you can delete items as well and uh, usually you will not actually have to do this particular thing but if i delete array 1 0 element that is a now my array uh, my array now will be array 1 uh, okay so if i print my array 1 yeah if i print my array 1 now i will have b c d because i deleted this now uh, so this is how you can uh, delete items if you want to insert more items you know what you have to do this is index 0 1 2 3 if you want you can just mention array 4 and hopefully we should get something a little weird yeah so this is called as an index error now when you have this particular list and you say that okay i want to insert item at 4 the compiler is actually taking that okay i want to change the value at this location in terms of e and it goes okay array 0 1 2 3 4 there's no 4 so if you try to do something like this you will get out of the boundary okay so you will get an out of range error if you want to insert into this particular list there are separate functions to insert into these lists okay for example in case of array we have something called as an append which will put this item at the end and now if you check we have array having this particular value now okay so this is how you can change the value insert value delete value in a particular array now uh, okay there's one more thing which i skipped so far and just remember this is your array now or if you just delete all these things and get our normal array back it'll be good okay so i just uh, ran this thing again so your array value is again a b c d if i want three of these value there's another way of slicing this particular array and slicing is something which is very commonly used in uh, python so you need to remember this here i said that okay give me everything from one till three okay now if you imagine that okay till three has d as well because this is zero one two three this particular three is not included in python whenever you have ranges uh, you don't include the last item you include the first one you don't include the last item so it is basically saying that okay start from three and go till three don't include three so i got index uh, zero one one is there two two is there and three okay no i want till here only so i will print this much if i just remove this particular thing it will have no boundary so it will take it till the end and in that particular case i would have d similarly if i say that okay print till two and i don't give any initials it will take from the very beginning till two so zero one and not two because two is the boundary case now this is how you can manipulate these things in an array uh, once these are done we want to see if we can run a loop in an array so what happens there 
is let's say we have for i in range 0 to 3 okay uh, we just try to print i uh, no if you print i what will happen it will give me 0 1 and 2 so i took the value of 0 gone in printed i if it got in again taking the value of 1 got in printed 1 took the value of 2 got in printed 2 and since it's in the range 3 is not included okay it's still 3 so it didn't print 3 now since we need this we will put it as 4 so that we have the value 0 1 2 3 that covers the entire array but what did we do wrong i asked it to print i and i is just the index of the array so i need to tell it print this particular thing here what happens is that initially it will print a uh, array 1 0 uh, array 1's index 1 array 1 index 2 array 1's index 3 which is these four items so when i run this now i'll get a b c d all four now there's an alternative way if i am iterating through the particular array is that for uh, let's say alphabets in array 1 print alphabets okay so what happens here is that i get the same result but what happened here is that alphabets which is just a variable you can take any name here actually carried the first value of a the first time went inside the loop and followed this instruction now uh, as uh, as you know that i can actually add two strings i will just print uh, let's say hello uh, letter and then i would print alphabets again so let's say instead of just printing it i'm doing some sort of an operation on it as well so what happens is uh, alphabet takes the first value in an array which is a it gets in run this particular code that is print alphabet we get one then it goes and print the next code that is hello letter and then this again al uh, alphabet which is in this particular iteration a so we get a hello letter b hello letter c hello letter and d hello letter now uh, looping and arrays both of them are very very commonly used in almost all the programs that we'll do so just go through the video again and if you have any question go ahead and ask